Hey everyone, it's Richard Solomon and let me say good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening depending on where and when you're viewing this. It's morning, I think today is the 4th of February, let me see, yes, 4th February 2020 and uh, this month um, I want to look at purpose why we do what we do as we lead up to the launch of our DCC Consulting Academy. And if you missed them uh, last month, at least for two weeks in January, we talked about mindset and we dubbed that Millionaire Mindset. I haven't gotten a catchy phrase for, for February yet, so I need to get one, right? But if you haven't, be sure to go back and look at those videos. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell on YouTube so that you will know when new content is uploaded. Let's talk about why. So for many people that I have encountered over my 21 years of working as an organization development consultant, uh, many of them, their reason for doing or wanting to get into this type of work has been unsustainable in my opinion. Let me explain. So many people, one, love the idea of traveling to different places. And I'll probably do another video about travel later down. Uh, many people like the idea of being able to charge significant fees to clients so make good money there's nothing wrong with travel and making money but those things are not big enough to sustain you you need a big why why do you need a big why well when you go to work in the traditional model when you go to an organization the work is generally laid out for you and i talked about this in um, previous videos or in a previous video so you go there someone has already said in most cases these are the hours these are your terms of reference or your job description this is what you're expected to do and these are the targets and objectives that you're expected to hit and for most of you, most of us, our job at that organization was not meant to go find the work. It was meant to do the work. And so you would have had a structure put in place for you by any number of people uh, and supporting elements of that structure to be able to do the work. When you decide to get into the consulting business, that structure simply does not exist. Sure, there are books written. Sure, there are other organizations who have done similar things, other people who have done similar things. But there is no guarantee that what you see in other organizations or done by other people will necessarily work for you. And then certainly not necessarily at the beginning of your, of your practice. So you need to come up with all of those pieces pretty much on your own. And that takes quite a bit of doing. You don't start out, I shouldn't say you don't. It is very rare that you will start out with big success. Most consultants, freelancers, entrepreneurs indeed start out with small successes. In some cases, no successes. And over time, you're able to build that into something that is sustainable. But you need a different why. Money, travel, um, notoriety, um, fame, none of those things will sustain you or motivate you when the going gets tough. And I can tell you without fear of contradiction, the going 
will get tough. You see, you are swimming against the tide. And when you swim against the tide, it takes a different type of level of energy, ability, drive, motivation, not just to get you going, but more importantly, to keep you going. Anyone can get up and say, I'm going to do something different. I want something more. I want a different experience. I want a different outcome. For many of the people that I've spoken to, their why has to do with sharing their knowledge. Their why has to do with making the world a better place than the way they found it. Their why has to do with helping organizations to do better. Their why has to do with controlling their own time. And I would say that the control of your own time is a significant why for most people. Uh, the structure that the organizations tend to have, uh, as I mentioned before, Monday to Friday, eight to four, and you do, um, you know, you do a, a forty-hour, fifty-hour work week kind of thing. Uh, for for some of us, and for many of us, it doesn't allow for the the kind of flexibility that we would prefer. So, for many people, how you use your time, the way you, or your ability to have flexibility with your time, is is a major driver. Whatever it is, you need to find a big why. Now Maslow would tell us that at the very base, food, clothing, shelter, and such things are, are what will motivate us, unfulfilled needs. And I agree, um, if, you, if you need to be able to pay your bills, pay your car note, pay your mortgage, um, send your children to school, have decent health care, etc. As an entrepreneur, those things can be motivators if they're unfulfilled but in my experience once you get some success under your belt and you're able to get those things in place at to a reasonable level they no longer hold as motivators and you need to find something or things that will cause you to get up when you came in at 1 a.m the morning before from a function or something you don't have client work that morning but you know there are quite a few important things that should be done uh, to keep the wheels turning over and over and over and so when there isn't a financial or a physiological requirement that says you need to go you need to do you should have, you need to have some other really important whys that will propel you to stay committed. The dream and even the vision of success and whatever that is for you will get you going, but you need to have some commitment to keep you going. It's not enough to think, well, um, I want to live a certain lifestyle, and very often when we, we say lifestyle, we mean economically, um, and believe that the desire for that lifestyle will be sufficient. What happens when you hit it? In reality, I have found that we all need a why. Now, I've been doing this for two decades. And so I'm at the state now where I quite realistically choose the types of projects I get involved with. Quite realistically decide the type of organizations I prefer to work with because my why has been adjusted over time. I was talking earlier about not having a structure and, not, and now I'm talking about knowing your why. And this is one of the reasons I'm putting together this DCC Consulting Academy. For people who not just want to get into consulting, but need the pieces, need the components to help them, to help you 
not just be able to use your competence and the skills that you already have, but to identify the whys that will keep you going, that will move you forward, to keep you going over the long term and to help you do it in such a manner that there is win-win, win for you, win for your customers, win for your family as well. This is Richard Solomon, great sharing this time with you. See you soon.